All righty, traders, welcome. Going to do a segment today on how I trade strangles. I've uh, you know, talked uh, quite a bit about how I love strangles. One of my favorite trades of the two trades I do the most would be the 112 trade and strangles. I love strangles. I think it's one of the best trades out there, one of the best return on capital trades that you can possibly do. Uh, I think you've got to have it in most accounts. I think it's a, uh, a really well uh, you know, well put together plan for most of you if you trade it correctly. And I'm going to show you how I trade it. Now, now I'm not the same as everybody else out there. There's plenty of people trading strangles uh, and they may do it a little bit different than me. It's all good. I don't know that there's any one particular way. I'm a big chicken, so I want to trade a little bit more conservative. I want to make as much money as I can without really crossing that line of you know, just way too much risk on uh, and taking some significant losses. Even though you can make some more money potentially that way, it's just not for me. My risk appetite is not the same as everyone else's. You know that my uh, income is uh, you know, largely that I'm forecasting when I'm trading. I'm looking for 3% a month. That's my goal. 3% a month, every month, 36% a year, it's all good. Some years I smash it. Last year was 80%. Great. Uh, this year I'm on track for 30, about 36 to 38%, something like that right now. Could still have another great um, you know, month and a half left of this year. I'm uh, recording this thing in the middle of November. Uh, so we could still hit 40% or more. Uh, it's all it's all great and good. As long as I'm hitting my 3% in realized income every single month, I'm pretty happy. And strangles is one of the best ways to do it, in my opinion. So let's jump into how I'm trading strangles uh, for you. So, you know, I, I think this is the way to do it. Uh, and I love trading strangles uh, and the 112 because it gives me consistent income. Strangles are pretty consistent earners. Uh, out there. It's a simple mechanical trade. You can't get a whole lot more simple than selling a call and selling a put and done. Okay. This simple mechanical trade doesn't require a whole lot of genius uh, to put it on, which is what I like. So I like consistent, I like mechanical, and I like something that's repeatable that I can just do over and over and over and over. Uh, there's no complex technical analysis needed. Uh, for this trade, we will touch base on a little technical analysis, but really, I, there's no complex technical analysis needed to put on a strangle. They can be scaled for different account sizes, so you can scale strangles for any size account out there. I don't care if you have a $10,000 account or a $10 million account, you can scale your strangles uh, to fit the, to fit your account. Uh, they have a very, very high win rate, at least the way I'm going to do it here. Uh, it's a pretty high win rate. I'm going to be doing something that gives me a little over a 90% win rate. And that's what I look for uh, in my trades is something that gives me a pretty good, a pretty high win rate. Um, and then coupled with futures options, they are a great trade. So I love these, love these trades. I think they're fantastic. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, when you're using futures, it's the way, okay. I think especially when you have a small to medium size account. When I say a medium size account, I'm talking one hundred, two hundred thousand dollar accounts. I think once you start to get into, you know, that million dollar account or larger, you can still use futures. But I think uh, having portfolio uh, margin opens up the world for you on doing some other underlyings and SPX. I do not do them on individual stocks. Uh, because A, it's just too risky. Stocks move up and down and stocks can move up and down. Not that indexes can't, okay? but individual stocks can move up and down at the drop of a hat. Somebody says something, boom, stock drops 20% overnight. Bad earnings, boom, it's up 50% overnight. You know, just something crazy can happen. Uh, somebody can be talking about their own stock and it takes down not only their stock, but half the industry. Okay, I don't want that. Okay. I don't want one bank stock to take down my all, you know, my bank stock uh, that's doing just fine, but yet it happens. So I don't like stocks. I'd rather stick with indexes, but specifically futures is what I like to trade. All right. So let's talk about the basics of the strangle. In a strangle, you are selling both a call option and a put option. We're using the same expiration date, but obviously different strike prices. Okay. The put's going to be a much lower price. This call will be a much higher price. And we're going to expect that the underlying asset is going to stay within that specific price range 
all the way until expiration. So I'm creating an upper limit with the call and a lower limit with the put. And all I want is the price to stay in the middle somewhere. Yeah, it's going to fluctuate a little up. It's going to fluctuate a little down. But in the end, I need to get where I need to stay in, in between my buffers the entire time. Now, with the call option, I am going to sell an out of the money call option. And with the put option, I'm going to simultaneously sell an out of the money put option. Okay. And we're going to generate income since we're selling both options. So because I'm selling an out of the money put and I'm selling an out of the money call, uh, I get paid to sell. Uh, so I'm taking in income at the beginning and theta is going to work in my favor. So as those options decay, I'm going to start making money, even if the price doesn't move at all. Uh, and we lose on these if the price of the underlying starts to move significantly in one direction or another. I can go a little farther and say, too, if volatility really cranks up on the underlying asset and it starts to move in one direction or the other, okay, again, you can lose uh, in those particular situations. But stock can move up and we win, stock can move down, and we win, stock can stay the same, and we win. The only time we're really going to lose is if the underlying moves significantly in one direction or another towards our strikes that we sold. All right, so let's look at the trade entry and how I trade strangles. And I'm going to put a couple examples on uh, as well, so you get a chance to see a few examples. But trade entry for me, I look for 90 DTE. Many of you ascribe to the 45 DTE thing, not me. Okay, I don't like 45 DTE. What I found is with 90 DTE, I get similar decay and I get farther away with a little bit more premium. Uh, and uh, I can still get out of that trade in about 30 days. And for me, on most of these, I'm selling around a seven delta put. Now you can move this up and down a fraction. Uh, and I'm selling a uh, six delta call. I'm selling them a slightly different delta uh, simply because call premium is less uh, and call because of skew, the call side is going to be closer to the money and your strangle is not balanced on the left and the right side uh, or the call and the put side. I would like this to be as balanced as can. So I'm a little bit less delta, a little bit farther away on calls typically. Uh, delta wise, and I'm a little bit uh, 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 shorter in on the delta on the puts. Now, how do I size these? I size them so that my max loss is 2% of my net leg. So let's say you have a $100,000 account. Okay, That would mean I size this so that my max loss uh, would exceed no more than $2,000 or 2% of my net leg. Okay, you have a $500,000 account, then I'm sizing this so that my max loss does not exceed $10,000. Again, 2% of my net leg. We're going to go into uh, the, the profit target and the stops here, but I'm using a 2x max loss, which is a 3x stop. We'll talk about that. So a 2x max loss, if that's going to equal 2% of my net leg, okay, then I want my credit to be half of that. So if my max loss on a $100,000 account is $2,000, I'm going to put the trade on taking in a $1,000 credit because if I hit a 2X loss, that would be $2,000. Okay, so the $1,000 times two, 2,000 bucks, you guys get it. Okay. I like to do these on futures uh, because you get unbelievably great leverage using futures. And I still believe that futures are for the most part, a bit safer than individual stock names, okay? Yes, oil can move, gold can move, bonds can move, you know, Forex, Aussie dollar can, mu can move, okay? ES, which is S&P uh, futures. Yeah, they can all move, but typically it's a larger basket uh, as you would. Oil is you know, not just an individual company that someone can come out and say, hey, I hate oil now. Can OPEC do something? Can Iran do something crazy? Uh, you know, can the U.S. do something crazy? Absolutely, you can do something that's going to impact the price of oil. They can cut production, increase production. 
Uh, they can put tariffs, taxes on. They can stop importing. They can start exporting. People can cheat and sell their oil on the black market. Whatever it is, you can still manipulate those types of futures a bit. However, I've found that because of the leverage, I can get pretty far away and I feel pretty comfortable trading those particular underlyings that I understand a bit better. So I like ES, which is the S&P, CL, which is oil, GC, which is gold, ZB, which is the 30-year bond, 6A, which is the Aussie dollar, 6B, which is the British pound, 6E, which is the euro. Okay, I also like uh, trading HE uh, a bit too, which is lean hogs. And I like LE, which is live cattle. I also like HG. I really should change this and put HG up there uh, as well. In fact, maybe I'll just do that on this particular slide. Uh, but I do like HG as well because I think copper gives you an awesome opportunity okay, to trade strangles as well uh, at times. So there's a couple others. Net gas, not one of my favorites for doing strangles on. Uh, these are really my favorites. Doesn't mean you can't trade others. Uh, out there, you may want to trade corn and soybeans and uh, any of those other things uh, that, that you see, net gas, knock yourselves out. If you're comfortable with those underlines, feel free to trade them. All right. So there's my trade entry. That's exactly what I'm doing for the trade entry. Now, volatility helps. And I'm not trading based solely on volatility because, well, I'll tell I'll talk about that in a minute. Selling premium in high volatility absolutely helps. Okay. If volatility is high on one of these strangles, uh, then protect, you know, now that means the move is going to be bigger. So your when volatility is up, the moves can swing up and down. So the more volatility, the more risk in the trade, but you get paid more for that risk. So selling premium in higher volatility can help. Farther out of the money, you get paid more. And you get, you know, so you get more credit. So you can go farther away and get paid more uh, when volatility is up. How do I gauge volatility? Uh, if I'm trading ES, I'm looking at the VIX. You know, VIX right now is dead as a doornail, down about 13. But VIX was up, you know, in the 20s uh, there. So you're getting a lot more premium. Uh, CL or oil uses OVX. OVX has ranged from about 24 to 48. Right now, it's around 38 at the recording of this, which is a bit elevated, but dropping. Uh, so oil volatility is up. Gold uses, you know, we can use GVX uh, as well. And it's ranged, you know, from around 10 to almost 20 uh, on and off for the last uh, couple of years. I mean, we've seen some spikes up into the 30s, but uh, very rare um, that that happens. But they certainly can spike. I like to see that volatility is you know, potentially rising or has already risen and is starting to fall. Ideally, if volatility is going to fall, uh, it's going to give you a better opportunity. So let's uh, take a quick look here up on the screen. Uh, I've got GVX uh, up here, and this gives you a, a chance to see. Okay, volatility in gold, you can see it on the right hand daily chart here we've been up to the 20s where volatility had spiked pretty good and now it's been just drifting off uh down into the 12 level uh or something so i think you know now uh, you've got an opportunity uh to take a look uh you know at at gold when it's when it's potentially dropping on you so it's something to take a look at and again i don't necessarily uh you know, think that you have to only trade based upon volatility. However, I think it can help you in some situations. Uh, also, uh, I will use CVOL a bit. Now, CVOL is an interesting tool and it's been around and I don't say that it's the holy grail of anything. I, I think it can help, but like anything else, I think you have to uh, play it with a grain of salt. If you go to the CME group, you can look up the CVOL index, which is the uh, volatility, volatility index of different asset classes in the futures. You know, I can look up gold here as well. So if I want to look at, up the CVOL in gold, I like to usually have this thing uh, at a year. And I can see the dark line is volatility. And then the dotted line is the actual index. Well, you can see that gold again. I just looked at it on my GVX that I shared with you. But you guys can see where... Again, on October 20th, it was at a high and it's dropped all the way down 
uh, to 12. It's the exact same chart that I just showed you on uh, GVZ, which is the CBOE gold volatility um, index. In fact, you can see it up here, uh, that uh, particular symbol. So there's, um, so there's gold. I'm taking a look at gold. If I wanted to look at live cattle, I can do the same type of thing. And not, now live cattle, you can see that volatility is elevated. Okay, So volatility is elevated on live cattle. Uh, so it gives us something to take a quick look at. Uh, but does that mean, you know, I'm going to trade this? I have to trade it? Not necessarily. But this is giving you a sense that right now volatility is about as high on live cattle uh, as it's been. So live cattle might be something to take a look at. Now, live cattle has been dropping. Uh, I think it's in a good range uh, for things. In fact, uh, I also have um, some trades on uh, that I'm looking at potentially in live cattle. So I think uh, I think it's a good opportunity here uh, to take a look at getting involved uh, on live cattle. In fact, I have a strangle in live cattle going right now that I put on a couple of days ago. So live cattle is already one that I'm, I'm already, uh, I'm already in that uh, as, as a whole. So I'm already in that one as a whole. Uh, let's take a look maybe at the 30 year. So if we take a look at the 30 year bond, the volatility on the 30 year uh, has been up pretty significantly. So uh, along with uh, really, uh, the VIX. It kind of mirrors the VIX, in my opinion, quite a bit when you look at the 30-year at bonds. But vol bond volatility was fantastic okay, back here on about October 20th and has been coming off along with um, the VIX as well. So again, you can use CVOL to do that. Pick, uh, you know, pick your underlying and take a look. Uh, it can certainly help give you some trade ideas. I'm not saying you should stay in or out based upon um, that, but look at the volatility indexes, whether you use CVOL or you want to use something like the VIX here, uh, or, you know, depending on the underlying that you're using, um, you get it. Uh, the one thing I want to make sure that you are 100% aware of, though, on this is don't wait for volatility if you want to eat. Okay? If you wait for volatility to be high on uh, on everything, you may not get enough trades on. You know, right now you might have lean hogs or live cattle or something that has high volatility, but gold volatility is pretty low. VIX is pretty low. Okay, I'm still trading futures uh, on on ES, and I still have gold strangles on. Now, some of those are put on a little higher volatility, but I would still even put them on today because I'm comfortable with those underlines. And even in lower volatility, it's still a probability game. I still want to eat. I still got to make some money. I can't like, oh, I'm not going to make no trade this month because volatility is not high enough. I'm looking for higher volatility trades, but I will still get trades on to make sure that I still have income coming in. So I hope that makes sense uh, for you. So use the volatility, use it smart, I like to see that it's moving up, uh, increasing, and potentially then starting to contract a bit. Uh, I don't want to get it right when it's starting to increase, but if if it's been moving uh, up for quite a while, you know, and the uh, the trade makes sense, go ahead. So now look at technical analysis. Do charts matter when it comes to uh, to trading strangles? Well, yes and no. I know it's a terrible answer for you, but it's still all about probabilities in the end. If you're trading roughly six delta or five delta or 16 delta, you know, one standard deviation, I don't care what you trade. Okay. If you're trading a 16 delta, okay, strangle, then you're still going to have that probability. Okay. Which is uh, typically uh, somewhere around an 84%. Probability of profit. If I'm trading, you know, six delta, I'm going to have about a 94% probability of profit. If I'm trading two delta, I should have roughly a 98% probability of profit. Okay, you got to find the vol the uh, you got to find the delta or the distance that works for you based upon your risk tolerance uh, and your income level. 
there's nothing wrong with trading 30 delta or 16 delta or 12 delta what have you what i have found is that seven and six seven put six calls works best for me to start uh, but i do have trades that are lower than that i have trades with four or five delta on because the leverage is so doggone good in futures that i don't need to go up higher delta and i can still make really really good money and get really great premium and i'm far away and i like to sleep at night i think if i was trading 16 or 20 delta i would not sleep as well okay it's too risky for me okay doesn't mean anybody else can't trade it i think there's lots of great traders that can trade that stuff um, so anyway it's still all about probabilities but i think charts matter because you can identify ranges a bit what's the upper range what's the lower range and you can also see volatility on a chart even if without CVOL or a volatility index, you can see volatility on a chart. Okay. And you can do that using either Bollinger Bands or the three ATR uh, band. I like both of those. And let's take a quick look at charts. So let's take a look at ES here. And let's look at, I like the weekly better when I'm trading uh, because I'm going out 90 days. Okay, I'm going out 90 days. Okay, which is around, what, 12 weeks, 13 weeks? I mean, that's 90 days here, I mean, is a long way. It, you know, it's three months. I can barely even get three months data on my daily chart here. Okay, but I like the weekly chart, and let's take a look. So if we look at ES, look at the Bollinger Bands here as back, uh, you know, back here, you know, we maybe we're starting to contract a bit. Okay, look at these Bollinger Bands, which is in the light gray. I know it's hard. I got a lot of junk on my screen and I apologize. But uh, the light gray here, look at the Bollinger Band. Look how tight this was back on 1016. Well, you remember VIX hit its high on 1020 and then has come off? Well, you can see it right here on the Bollinger Band, that the Bollinger Band was coming in and this is as tight as it's been on 10, 6, the week of 1016. Okay, and then it started to expand again. Okay, so wide and then contracting okay if you look at the three atr which is this bright white this is as wide as it's been on es okay so it's kind of telling you that you know volatility uh, is still a little bit elevated in my opinion i'm waiting for it to contract and start to come in it's, and it looks like it's starting to come in on the weekly which means for me volatility could, could start to uh, may start to contract Let's take a look at bonds. Okay, if I'm looking at the weekly chart on bonds, okay, volatility had been expanding at the Bollinger Bands more recently, uh, up to maybe just a couple of weeks ago. This was as wide as those Bollinger Bands have been on the weekly, and they're pretty wide on the three ATR as well. I think there's good volatility based upon that. Wide bands, okay, means high volatility, and I'm looking at the range now to see, okay, the three ATR and the Bollinger Band on ZB are up here about 128. And we're gonna use this as an example. Uh, so right now I'm gonna use this as the ranges. So the upper range for the three ATR is right around 128 on bonds. And then down here, it's around 106 on bonds, okay? And they're pretty, they're, you know, they're pretty wide uh, overall. Okay, is it trending? Well, it was trending down and now bonds have started to recover. So now they're in the middle or getting closer to the middle of the range. The middle of the range is usually the 21 day moving average. The closer we are to the 21 day moving average, the closer you are to the middle of the range, especially on the weekly. Okay, so we saw the ranges here. Let's do oil as well. I mean, look at this oil volatility back here, okay? When you're looking at July of this year, look at the size okay, of these Bollinger Bands and the three ATRs, pretty doggone wide um, here. Why? Because it, oil had spiked up significantly uh, here and volatility was at a high and starts to come in. Okay, Well, as we get into their range and we get close to the 21 uh, EMA, okay, now we're, we're right in the middle, usually the 21 EMA is pretty close to the middle of those bands. If I'm looking at oil right now, I'm looking at you know 98 for the high, okay, using the three ATR, and I'm looking for 67 as the low. 
Okay, so remember those numbers, and then let's just do uh, let's do ES uh, just for the heck of it here. Okay, I want to look at the highs and lows. So ES, the high on ES, okay, would be forty eight hundred. That's the three ATR on the weekly forty eight hundred up here. Okay, and then the three ATR down here is really around you know, 40, 58, 40, 60, somewhere in that range on ES. Okay, so we've got some ideas of ranges and we've got an idea, are Bollinger Bands wide and contracting or are they expanding? If they're expanding, volatility is increasing right now in there. So I think uh, it's a little bit of all, you know, of a misnomer here, but vol the Bollinger Bands are pretty tight, okay? Because uh, right now you've got some tightened volatility. Now, if you look at the daily, uh, the daily charts, I don't have Bollinger Bands on here, uh, but you can see the three ATRs are starting to really uh, pinch in a bit. So anyway, it gives us a good sense of ranges and so forth um, that you have. So do charts matter? Not necessarily. If it's in a strong direction, I don't want to fight it. But if it's in the middle of its range near the 21 EMA coming off of a big move higher or a big move lower, that's when volatility is still a bit elevated and it's in the middle of the range. I kind of like it there. I feel better. It's still a probability trade um, in the end. All right, trade exits. How do we get out? Max loss, 2x the credit received, which is a 3x stop. So if I put this on for $1,000 in credit, my stop loss is going to be when I lose $2,000. I'm sorry, that'll be my max loss. So I have to take a $3,000 stop. Okay, so $3,000, I stop when I lose $3,000 minus the $1,000 that I took in. That's a $2,000 loss, which is 2x my initial credit. Uh, profit targets, 50%. I have played and back tested. I've tried all kinds of different configurations, 25% and 100, 50% and 100, 50% and 200% loss, 50% and a 300% loss. And what I found was 50% profit target and a 2X stop uh, or a 2X max loss to be the best uh, for what I'm trading. I also look to exit at 21 DTE to avoid any gamma risk in the trade. Okay, I don't like getting that close to expiration. Uh, and then I'm afraid that um, a, a big move could really bite me. So I am out at 21 DTE. It's one of the few tasty trade things that I will uh, use, but I still like that methodology. Uh, next one here is I do not adjust my strikes during the trade or roll unless I have no choice. Rolling is losing. Many of you don't like that. So I posted that or made that comment in another video and all kinds of people, well, rolling is great if you know what you're doing. It probably is, okay? But in the end, to me, rolling means you are closing a trade for a loss. You are closing a loser. Then you are reopening a new trade in a trade that's already losing, which means it's probably trending in one direction or another. So now you're going to open another trade in the same asset that's still trending and you're going to do it closer to the money because if you're going to roll for a credit you're probably not getting farther away than you were the first time uh, or maybe you can do your same strikes but it's rare okay that you know, you're you're putting on maybe the same if you rolled the same strikes but the assets already moved well now you're closer to the money on one of your legs okay it's no longer a balanced trade okay well, if you're gonna, I'm gonna move the call side up and the put side down, and well, then it's not the same trade anymore, and it's not really a roll. Okay, rolling would mean extending out in time. Maybe you can adjust a leg slightly on that, but for the most part, you're just putting on a riskier trade. And in my opinion, some of you guys are pro professional rollers, and you're great. Um, I just want to just get out and get in. Okay, I have a 90% win rate. So I'm okay taking the loss. I'm going to win the next nine. So why not put it on uh, or take the loss off for, for a, uh, take the trade off for a loss? Okay. And then lastly, I would take assignment if absolutely necessary. Okay. I mean, if it's a, if it's such a phenomenal deal and I don't, you know, I just let it blow through my stops and I'm just going to take assignment on it then fine, because I don't mind owning Tesla, which I would never trade uh, stocks. But you know, if you don't mind owning it at some ridiculously low price, great. Okay. 
if you don't mind owning the S&P at 4,000, then take assignment. Okay. It's all good, but only if necessary, in my opinion, I'm only doing that uh, if I need to. And again, I do not adjust strikes. I don't roll the untested side up or down. As soon as you do that, it whipsaws, goes the other way, okay, and you're toast. Okay, Now you've got, yes, oh, and you can go inverted. That's even crazier, in my opinion. I mean, I'm not ever doing that. Uh, I mean, if, and as soon as I roll the call side down for some more credit, it reverses because it's going to mean revert. Okay, It's going to mean revert on you. And as soon as you roll one side down, you've got a smaller window of margin, which means if it reverses and mean reverts on you, now you've got a loss uh, on that side. And now I have to close. Okay, So again, doesn't mean you can't do it. I'm telling you my strategy. All right. Uh, and then the return on capital on these things is so unbelievably great. I love the return on, on capital uh, on these particular trades. Uh, one contract of oil probably uses around $3,000 in buying power, takes in 780 bucks. That's a pretty good return on capital. Gold, 790 bucks and around 3,200. Again, this is using Tasty Trade as my platform. Okay. If you're on IBKR or you're on TOS, maybe completely different uh, for you. I'm telling you uh, what I'm getting. And I'm just using a Reg T uh, account for these numbers, not a, a PM account. But if you're using futures, PM doesn't matter. Okay, Because futures use span margin, not PM. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, a ES, 1,275 on 3,300. 6A. 800 on 1940 using five contracts, 60. I mean, you can see how good the return on capital is. Now, those are my initial credits. And I again show for 50% of that credit uh, is my profit target. And so that's what I'm seeing when it comes to uh, profit target. Uh, I can see uh, a pretty good opportunity. So let's take a look and let's jump into a few trades and I'm gonna see if I can share my trading platform with you. And let's jump in to Tasty uh, Trade and let's see. So I've got, uh, now you can see up here, just in my account alone, okay, here are, here's a strangle. It's at up, it's at 46%, that's ready to come off soon. So I got a strangle on oil. Uh, I think there's another strangle on oil here. I've got uh, two strangles on ES in here. I think they're down because of the moves we've made, but uh, two strangles right now. That one's pretty flat. So two strangles there. Uh, gold, I've got a strangle there that's up 30%. Here's another gold strangle up 10%. Uh, here's uh, you know the recent live cattle strangle. Uh, this is pretty much flat after six days. Uh, so you can see some strangles on. Uh, as we did. So let's get into ZB uh, because this is one we were talking about where volatility might be up a bit. How would I trade it? Super simple. I'm going to go out closest to 90 days, which is the 94 day strike. I'm going to look for something around seven Delta right now. And I'm going to look for six on the puts and I'm going to look for six Delta on the calls. And that's it. So there's my trade. Uh, right now on ZB. Now I do want to make sure that, that we can see it. So here is the strangle. So you can see on the put side, you are a little closer. Um, and on the call side, you're a little bit farther away uh, on this one because of the skew. But here's the overall trade. So I'm going to take in uh, on this trade, $515 using 2,200 in buying power. Okay. If I close this 515 at 50%, okay, so 515 of 50%, that's 257, 257 divided by 2204 gives me a roughly 12% return. If this comes off okay, in 30 days or so, pretty good. If it takes 90 days to come off, it's still 12% in 90 days, which is 4% a month, okay, still exceeds my 3% threshold. Uh, but there's ZB. Now, remember we looked at their technical analysis to see where those limits were. Well, if you remember, it was 128 on the upside. So we're at a 131 call. So we are outside 
of that three ATR range that I gave you. And then the downside was 106, and we're a little bit lower than the 106. So this trade just happens to be sitting right outside of the range that I picked for ZB, okay? I love where ZB is. I think this is a great trade. In fact, you should just put it on now. Um, you know, if I put this trade on uh, right now, I like to size it uh, appropriately. So if I was sizing this for my account, I have a $320,000 account that I'm using for the Income Navigator service. Uh, so let's say I'm at $300,000 account. Uh, you know, the max loss for me at 2% would be, uh, you know, a $1,500 uh, loss. Okay, so I have a $320,000 account. Okay, 2% on that, I'm sorry, this, I, I went the other way, is $6,000. So I could put on a trade that uses about $3,000 uh, in credit, a, a 2x loss would be 6000 I have a $320,000 account. So that would be right around a 2% loss if I took a 2% loss on this particular trade. Um, so I could put this trade on. I like this trade. I think it's a great trade uh, on, on bonds. Let's look at something else. All right, so there's bonds. Now we talked about oil as well. So let's take a look at oil. I've already got some trades on in oil, but let's take a look at oil and see what we can uh, come up with. All right, so we're gonna go out closest to 90 days, which is this 85 DTE, February 14th. I'm gonna drop all the way down to about seven delta, okay, which is 58 and a half. Okay? And I'm gonna jump up to about six delta, okay, which is somewhere around this 103 and a half. Now, if I start to see some big open interest uh, I might consider, you know, moving it to the open interest, but for right now, I don't have to. So look at this trade. Right now, it's taking a 970 bucks on $2,200 in margin. You have to love it, okay? Now, when you're looking at this particular trade, okay, so let's look at this trade, okay? You can see the skew uh, on it. Again, puts are always a little bit less. Uh, here uh, because uh, of, of skew. I'm a little bit less distance away uh, than calls, but I fear the upside. But if you remember my levels on oil, the upside level was 98, which is right in here. This is 105, 103 and a half call. I'm well outside of my three ATR band on the weekly. And my downside was 67. Okay, I'm at 58 and a half. Okay, fantastic. I'm well outside of my three ATR bands on oil. I like this trade as well. I can put this on today. Okay, so there's another uh, trade opportunity. And then the last one is, let's just say we wanted to do ES and put on a trade in ES. We go out 90 days. There's my 87. I'm going to drop down here. I'm going to put on a 4,000, which is a seven delta. And then I'm going to go up here. And we're going to put on a 49.75. Because I've got this high open interest at 5,000, I'd probably just jump to that uh, and leave it there. But uh, I can get a little bit more if I if I move it down. So uh, you know what? We'll just leave it at 5,000, and you can see where this thing ends up. Here's the trade. Okay. Here's my trade. I don't even know if I can get it all in. So I can get it all in the picture here. Okay. I'm taking in a thousand bucks on $4,000 in buying power. Again, still fantastic because that'd be a $500 win on 41.26, which is 12% in 90 days. I expect to hit 50% though in less than 90 days. I expect to hit it in about 30 uh, to, you know, days or so. Can it go to 30 or 40 or 50 days? It sure can. Okay. Would you like 12% in 50 days? I bet you would. Okay. Now, here's the, the puts on this. If you remember, what was our upside range? 4,800. Okay. We're at 5,000. So we're well outside the upside range here. And then if I look at the downside, and again, this the skew here is pretty evident. Uh, you got a lot more downside on the puts. The downside was 4060. I'm at 4,000. I'm just outside of that downside three ATR. I like where these are. I'd put all three of these trades on uh, right now and, you know, 
get 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 working and get making money. Uh, well, C vol is not as high as it should. Who cares? Okay, volatility is down. Who cares? You either want to put a trade on and make money, or you can sit there on the sidelines and wait for the perfect trade setup to happen. Okay, while the rest of us are making some money. All right, so take a that, that's a quick look at that. Let's do a little quick review. My portfolio, how I've set it up for the most part, and this was a little bit of a ways ago when the account was smaller, was, hey, let's assume I put on four strangles at a time, okay, using, taking in about $1,000 credit each, using $5,000 in buying power. Now, you saw that for ES, we were getting $1,000 on $3,000. You saw on CL, we were getting it, you know, 1000 on roughly 20 some hundred bucks. So even this is high. Okay, but if I put four strangles on, taking in a thousand dollars credit, and just assume my buying power was five k on each, I'd be using twenty thousand dollars in buying power. And for me, maybe always having four strangles working. Okay, two this month, two next month. Okay, I don't know when they'll come off, but uh, I would uh, put those on. If we can assume that we're going to close two of them each month, okay, I have two strangles coming off in December, and then two strangles coming off in January. Okay. I've always got four running in different underlyings. Okay. I just want to make sure I always have stuff running so that every 30 days I'm taking at least two of them off. Okay. If I take two of them off at 50%, okay, that means I take in $500 each. That gives me $1,000 in income monthly. I'm making $1,000 in income using technically only $10,000 in buying power on those two particular trades. Okay. So, a uh, thousand bucks on 10 K. Okay. gives me a 10% of uh, you know, return on capital a month. No, you're not going to make 120% a year because you're not going to use a hundred percent of your account for this particular trade style. However, if you used a significant portion of your account on strangles, okay, you should be able to make a pretty doggone good living. Okay. You are going to have losses. You are going to have winners. Okay. But in effect, you should be able to win with this particular strategy at about 90%. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. If you like this, go ahead and click like uh, on this. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're not a subscriber uh, to the YouTube channel. And if you want to see us trading live, come join us in the Discord channel. Uh, information's below in the description. But I really want you to learn how to do strangles, how to do them properly, Strangles on futures can really be a nice income producer for you. It could be your main strategy uh, for some. For me, it's number two behind the 112, which is the core that drives the income. But this gives me the juice uh, to really help uh, my returns. All right. You guys have a great rest of your day. I hope this was helpful to you. Get out there. Trade some. Come join us. Love to see how you're doing. Share some ideas with us. Uh, everybody take care. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.